Yes. Tension. We're away. Timber Kits was founded by my parents quite a few years ago, and they've built it up very slowly over the years. Good luck. Deal. My parents were retiring, and somebody needed to take over the business. Uh, it was unthinkable that it wouldn't continue. There is a large degree of responsibility that I feel about being faithful to the foundations that they have built. Hello, I'm Sarah Reist, and this is my business partner, Phil Wilson, and we run Timber Kits Limited. We're here today to ask for £25,000 investment for a 15% share of the business. Timber Kits are wooden mechanical kits we design, prototype and distribute from our base in Mid Wales and they're manufactured in China. We sell to a wide variety of small to medium sized shops, 90% of which are in the UK and 10% go abroad. So Timber Kits is a family business that I bought from my parents in 2012 with Phil's help and investment. They had built it up over many years and provided me with a firm foundation from which I could launch more ambitious plans. We'd like now to present you with some of the products so you could take a closer look and take any questions. A pitch with mechanical precision from Sarah Reist and Phil Wilson. They're hoping the dragon's zest for their wooden model kits will translate to a £25,000 investment in their company. Deborah Meaden's certainly enjoying the product. Did I win? No. Will she be as smitten? with the investment prospect. It sounds to me like this was a family business that was really quite substantial at some stage. So you yes. had a factory, and presumably your family got quite, you know, comfortable lives from that factory? No. Um, they grew up very slowly. They had in mind that they wanted to really create um, a little pocket of industry in rural Mid Wales. That there was a legacy they wanted to leave. Yeah. What's the most that's ever been sold of this product? Uh, at the time that I took it over, where the turnover was 190 for that year, that was its biggest year. Oh, was it? So although they had a factory themselves, it was a very small one. But it was a slight social element to it. They wanted to put something back into their local, which yes. is a, a yeah. fantastic thing and they, to be you doing. Know, that, was, that really was their, their, their yeah. core ethos. But you, you, you're now saying, at the end of the day, it's still got to make money. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it has no future. So Absolutely. That's, they, that's... They then got to a point where there was a bit of a crunch time when obviously the economical viability of running their own factory became, you know, so minimal that they had to decide whether they were going to continue at all or transfer to China. Uh, right, OK. So, so you make absolutely nothing in Wales? Yes. What would the cost have been had you kept it in, in, in Wales? Um, I don't know, because that it, it's a long time back in the history of the company, so there weren't figures that I, I would have been familiar with at the time. Have you considered... Um what it would take to bring some of the production back to the UK, because there's a heritage feel about this. Well, we haven't done any work on that front at all, you know, what it would cost. But I think it would be an interesting exercise. I, I think it would, because actually, um, if I'd got involved in the early stages and this was a start-up, I would be saying, I'm not convinced that is a product to be made in China. I'll bet you the margin between making it here and making it over there is is definitely narrowing. Well, I would be I very happy to take advice think, on anyone who's got so. the experience. You don't and, think so. And I'll tell you why. Because the factory making this in China are probably making similar product for other people. The efficiency levels are high. Their working hours are longer. And I would I would I would dispute that. Well Tuka I, I haven't was, finished. Yeah. Tuka, oh, sorry. Tuka might dispute that. But I've got a product that came into the den. We had it costed in China and we've actually put manufacturing into the UK, and the margin difference is tiny, much smaller than I expected. The emotional cost it adds can far outweigh that cost. And we make millions of these widgets, but, but actually we found it was equally as competitive. It's a difference between making widgets and making those. No, 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 no. Tuka, you don't even... I'm not talking widgets, by the way. I was just using that word. OK, it would be an interesting exercise. It, I think it, it would be. The king of outsourcing, Tuka Suleiman, crosses swords with Deborah Meaden over the benefits of UK production. Can Nick Jenkins diffuse the tension by focusing on Sarah's aspirations? Um, Sarah, can I ask what 
what you personally would imagine that success um, would look like. If you could make a very nice living from it, but it's not a multi-million pound business, would that be a success? I'm, I'm completely driven by the creativity. So I'd like the business to be um, financially firm enough so that I can indulge in that bit and we can keep that excitement and energy going. You won't find us on the high street. You'll find us in the shambles in York. You'll find us in the north lanes in Brighton. Garden centres, boutiques, Christmas markets. You know, all those slightly more quirky outlets. And when... I because it's really interesting listening to your um, the way that you talk about where you are and where you'd like to see yourself. Because I must admit, I expected you to say more major retailers. Um, but you said, no, I like the fact that we are Christmas markety and we're niche and we're sort of boutique -y and... Um, no, I wouldn't say that was true. Um, I have a great deal of appetite in seeing where else we can take it in the UK. Um, I would like to see it grow more into the museums and heritage because I think it's very appropriate for that. Um, How the big other... is that market? I have no idea. Um, I, think it's, I think it's pretty big and I think it's growing. We've just literally... But just, uh... sorry, sorry to interrupt, because pretty large is different depending on who's saying it. Yes. Yeah. What does pretty large mean to you? I can't put a figure on it because we've only just touched our toes in it. But what us. would you consider to be a success then? What would the business look like? Would it have double its turnover? Do you think it's treble ten times? Our projections are to increase £20,000 a year for the next four years. So it's not dramatic growth. No. Hmm. As a business, I don't, I don't think as an investor I would be aligned with you, to be perfectly honest. It's just... It, it, I can, I, can, I can actually see it as a really great retail product, um, which I would want to go more down that route. So for that reason, I wish you all the best, but unfortunately, I'm out. A lack of ambition to hit the high street has spooked the shrewd businesswoman in Sarah Willingham. Peter Jones looks quite taken with the wooden dragons. Is he toying with investment? I think it's really brilliant. Thank I think you. it's Thank really, you. it's, I don't know whether it's because I don't get out much, <laughs> but you just don't get to see these sort of things as, as much. When I was a kid, woodwork and stuff was really big at school. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think if I'd taken that home, I think my mum would have been really proud. Yes. Yeah. How, how you can build this into a bigger business that could deliver profit enough for an investor to make money um, is slightly concerning to me. I have a sense that this might stay a small craft business, which is great, but for an investor, I'm just not convinced I'm going to get a decent enough return. So I'm going to say that I'm out. And if it's OK, I'll buy one of these from you. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I, th I think it's lovely. Um, I worry that it is niche, and that makes it quite hard to really penetrate if you're really um, quite niche. So I'm afraid I'll declare myself out and, and wish you all the best. I, I, I think that there is the potential um, for this to be slightly more of a premium product, but with the manufacturing based here and making a feature of that. Yeah. But unfortunately, to do that, I'd have to have some costed out numbers. And you may well work out that isn't going to work. Um, so unfortunately, I'm out. Unconvinced by the big brand prospects, four dragons are out, leaving the entrepreneurs almost out of investment options. Will Tuka Suleiman buck the trend and back the business? I'm, I'm a product person, creative, love to get behind how it's manufactured. So the, quest, the, the question really is, is that it needs more than 25,000, right? I will take your advice on that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to offer you 40,000 pounds for 30% of the business. I've looked you in the eye, and I can see we can work together. And I feel that by giving you 40,000, 
we can fulfill all the things we can do together. You know? But I want the 30% 30% to keep me interested. May we confer for a minute? Sure. The rules of the Den state that entrepreneurs have to walk away with all the money they ask for, but a dragon can also offer more cash to seal the deal. I do with his 40 for 25. What he's bringing to the party and all the things you were looking at before. It's a gamble. Would we go up to 30? Uh, it depends if he wants to be hardball. Do you, do you want to work with him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be there. Sure, you can pitch it with 40, 25. See how hard he plays it. And then accept his offer if you want. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your offer. Would you consider 40,000 for 25%? 25. 25%? No. It's a question of you have to make it worth my while and my time. In which case, I would like to accept your offer. Great. Yeah. So Tuka Suleiman uses his monetary muscle to keep the financial blood flowing to Sarah's family business for another generation. I think we'll, we'll work well together. I think so. I think somebody might have to tell us to shut up at some point. Yeah, I think we're going to do yeah. Shut up and sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well done, Tuka. Well done. Great. I hope the future will hold great growth, great creativity. Um, I'm looking forward to some new <laughs> adventures and lots of champagne and money, money. <laughs> <laughs>